everything works tonight. Cross our fingers, everybody. I don't need a mic, but you do. Just in case, we'll just put this over here. And, uh, oh, hi. Hi. How's it going? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Late Night Playset. My name is Jay Ryan. I'll get the monitor over there for the, for the guests. Uh, it's the Late Night Playset. We have got a great one for you this evening. Thanks for dialing us up. It is producer Mike from this show, but host of the Letterman Podcast, Mike Chisholm is here, as well as from the He Changed It and He Cast and He, Her, Her, Him. <laughs> they wrote a book. It's all sorts of awesome stuff. Candace Chisholm's here with him, uh, and they're going to be in the playset in just a few minutes, but they are in south of the border. They are in Los Angeles, not just for this. Not just for the Star Wars spectacular they enjoyed the other day, but they're here to see who? The man, the myth, the legend, David Letterman. Yeah, they're here to see Dave. They're going to go see Dave over at the Netflix show. So uh, we're going to kick their weekend off over here with whatever this is. <laughs> whatever, however this is related to Letterman. And then, uh, here, come over here. Why don't you come over here for a second? It would be really nice to get you in here. Look at this. I'm sure my mic will pick you up. Uh, this is producer Mike, everybody. He's actually here live in the studio. I wouldn't let him sit in the chair before. You wanted to sit in the chair. I did. How beyond, you doing? Beyond delighted. What's it like being in here? It's amazing. <laughs> it translates, but it doesn't translate. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be here with my brother from another mother. And I'm so happy to see you. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, Mrs. Ryan's here as well. There she is. You can't miss her. All right. We'll see you in just a second. Yes, um, look at me. I'm like and ushering him off stage. <laughs> Um, that's what's going on. The Instagram audience. Uh oh, live video stopped. Anybody know why? Probably because of the. Um, <laughs> give me one second. Give me one second here. It was probably because of the uh, Katrina and the waves and the copyright and all that. <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm guessing it had something to do with that. So we'll fire that up as well, uh, and then Instagram will come back. And uh, that's it. We got a show. We got a whole show. We're going to be talking about Dave. We're going to be talking about cars because tomorrow is good vibes. And these Canadians are going to join us. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, is everybody coming back? Yeah, starting to join us. All right. Um, Will, you know what to do. Finish! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Woo! All right, welcome back to the Late Night Playset. This microphone's going to be the death of me. <laughs> We're going to get all these cameras in here, and I'm going to get Instagram around here. There is just way too much to do today. I don't even want to tell you. Whoa! <laughs> we are glad everybody's here. Oh, man. Man, am I glad. Wow. <laughs> This one was really thrown together at the last minute, and it's going to show. Um, <clears throat> tonight is... Glasses on, glasses off. What the fuck? I'm trying to make a point here. <laughs> I'm mad as hell, and I'm not... Well, did you see the movie with George Clooney? He goes, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take any more of your shit. I'm like, That's not the line. Um, tonight is Thursday, May 5th, 2022. I wrote 2020. <laughs> Showing what a day it has been. I really did. Look at that. That is not right. Um, well, that's what kind of day it's been. I'm hoping the AC kicks on here in just a couple minutes. And um, I want to tell you about <laughs> Tradecraft Thursday. That's the first and most important thing I have to tell you about. Please, Lady Nicole. It's new. Thank it's you. new. Good, sir. <laughs> coming out my pores i don't know what's going on here i feel like the old days when you have a little sip of something yeah. i haven't had a little sip of something you would think so though. oh it's cinco de mayo maybe i'm feeling up everybody else time to blot <laughs> <laughs> that always helps <laughs> does, did any, does anyone else take the time to blot while i do <laughs> wouldn't that be funny Letterman used to have a little bit. Oh, everyone have a little tasty beverage. <laughs> everyone did. They do it the whole show. You do. <laughs> I would if I started now. I would do it the whole show. Now look what I did. I put that camera down, and then I put the boom arm right in Mike's face, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Oh, I can't live with myself. That's why that. That's why that stool's not there normally. <sighs> All right. Did I tell you the date? <laughs> it's two years ago, everybody. <laughs> it's today, two years ago. Don't ask Jay what the hell happened. I used to have a time machine. Um, and I talked all about it today. And this is what I want to tell you about in the hellos. I am out of sorts because I've already done a podcast today. I did. Does everybody remember Steve Mazon? Does anybody know Steve Mazon? He's a really funny stand-up stand -up comedian. Um, but he's more known in our little universe as the person who did the documentary Dying to Do Letterman. You remember that? That guy, yeah. Yeah, so that's why we became friends. But whatever, he's got his own podcast called Maison's Movie Club, and I did it today, but we talked quite a bit about Back to the Future and all that stuff and all the other, all the other crapola. Well, so we did time warp. Highly recommend checking out the, mo the Maison Movie Club. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Basically, it just picks a movie. We all watch it every week. Um, you know, it's always something on a free streamer that month, whatever. And, uh, and then we, uh, he picks a friend to talk about it with on the air, and then everyone listens and enjoys it. Doesn't that sound fun? I've done it. I had a blast. You did it? Yeah. For, oh, for which movie? For Super Bad. Oh, because you worked on that. That's so cool. Yeah. How like, long was your episode? Like <laughs> a half hour ish. Oh, we went long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> just so interesting. You know, it, uh, it was actually, now that I think about it, probably kind of appropriate that it went long because the movie we were doing was It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, which, while it's a comedy, it's the longest one in history. It's really long. Depending on which cut you watch, it's at minimum two hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> um, the one I like is, I think, about three and a half hours. <laughs> and it's from 1961. Did I mention it's an old movie? Yeah, so it really speeds along. Um, Girls love it. <laughs> do you really? No, no, you don't like that movie at all. <laughs> we talked about it. I told him. I enjoyed that movie because you like it so much, but it's really long. You're getting the experience that I got as a kid. And I told him this story today. My dad saw it in the th when it was double VHS. Remember the two, the double thing at the store? And oh, it was yeah. Really expensive. Uh, he saw it and he got excited about it. And it was a whole thing. Bought a special dinner and we watched it. And it was just like his favorite movie. So I got to like that movie, tolerate that movie. Uh, through him, and then of course I developed my own love for it. But I think that's exactly where you are. <laughs> oh, I like it because he likes it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my it's, wife. <laughs> it's good. I probably wouldn't pick it up on my own. The last double because I have a sound of music, so I'm. Oh, that's another one. Boy, that's long and fun. Yeah. I mean, the music's beautiful. And the sound of it's nice, but uh, 
That's a brutal story, man. That's one that I can't revisit, so I feel like I need to watch this car one with you. This car one? We're calling it a car one? Mad, 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 mad world. No, it's a car movie, though, to you? <laughs> it's got cars versus not. Ver- oh, okay. Most comedies don't. So to me, it's a... It's the silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. I, I get what you mean, though, in that there's, there are car chases. There are car chases. I get that. Mm-hmm. I just think we just watched Starch again. Hutch the other day. We, your favorite is Dukes of Hazard. I mean, <laughs> there's the, so many comedian the car The plot movies. is very central to this one around cars, I think. Yeah. All right. I don't want to belittle this point. Then I um, <laughs> it's already been a, it's already been a day. Uh, but anyway, please check that out because he's a damn nice guy and he's really fun. And he's really funny. If you get a chance to see him somewhere, if you're in uh, some city where he's playing, or you're, on a, I think he does cruise ships, or maybe that was just during COVID, but. No, nobody was cruising during COVID. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Think about your thoughts so we don't have to hear them. Got it. Um, but check him out. He's awesome. We love him. And he's going to be back here really soon, too. Uh, now, tomorrow, GVBC. Talking about that. Because not only do I... It's Thursday. You always know it's a Thursday show if you're watching one of these back because I have my little shirt here on. Because I, <laughs> if no one's put together the <laughs> little equation here, my Thursday wardrobe becomes my Friday clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I wear it for a little bit here tonight, and then it's all picked out and ready to go for tomorrow, where we get up at 6 in the morning, 5.30 in the morning to go to Breakfast Club. So anyway, uh, it's Breakfast Club Day, where I tell you about it. Here's all the stuff from Dual Shift. Go to DualShift.com or Dual Shift on the old Instagram. Check it out. Order it up. Rep the stuff. Enjoy it. Everything's very soft. Everything will cover your midsection like it's supposed to, uh, or your lid. Is it cover your lid, or this is a lid? This is a lid. That's a lid. I think. Pop my lid. Flip my lid. Flip top. Flip lid. I don't this is know. a dad hat. They call this a dad hat. If you're looking online, it's a dad hat. Um, and they're from uh, Dual Shift. Dual Shift is our friend David's uh, company, and uh, and uh, they do all of the good vibe stuff. And we're really grateful for that. So thank you. And um, our proceeds from that, we get a couple bucks from each thing, and it goes to the Autoimmunity Foundation. Awesome. Or will eventually, you know, whenever. <laughs> I don't know how it all works, but that's that's the uh, workflow, I believe, for how it's supposed to. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, huge, huge thank yous. And, uh, okay, so the reason I was bringing it up, though, it wasn't just to sell some swag. But we got that out of the way, didn't we? Um, tomorrow, tomorrow is GVBC, and I said something on Tuesday, and I was kind of cryptic about it. There have just been a lot of incidents lately. I think uh, a lot of new people have found out about GBBC either from reading articles or their friends are talking about it. This is all good and great and grand. We don't care who comes up to visit. Everyone is welcome. That's kind of why we started it. The whole point was some places are a little too clubby. Be our member and only our member. And we were like, mm, wow, that's sort of not what we're about. So GBBC sort of became a thing. All are legitimately welcome. But we have one ask, and that's that you respect the crest. I'm not telling you how to drive. <laughs> I'm not telling you what to do. Um, I'm just asking you to please remember me saying that so that while you're driving, you do whatever it is to you to respect the crest. Um, I've seen some videos lately of people like going over the lines, no other cars around, but like that's just not, you don't do it ever because. Uh, and I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying, like, this shit is not safe. It's not a regular road. This, this, this road will kill you. It, it, it tries to. <laughs> I swear, some days it's angrier than others. Um, so last week, we, we left going down the back way because we heard that there was an incident down the front way, a Porsche incident. And uh, I said, oh, well, we don't want to be any part of that. Uh, you know, everybody was fine. We knew that. But we don't want to be stuck. So we went this other way. And then at the bottom of that other way, there was a different incident. And now we're closing off all of the fingers to this area here. And that can't be our... Uh, event it can't be this thing that we all enjoy that's now becoming a problem places so uh please respect the crest that's it sorry for the pulpit sorry for the whatever i'm not i don't want to take anybody's fun away i don't want to lose any of my fun basically that's it this is why we can't have nice things it's that kind of thing like don't spoil it for the rest of us everybody just enjoy (laughs) and now there'll be new fuck jay stickers (laughs) 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 respect this (laughs) All right. I hate bringing that stuff up because I'm the la- I genuinely don't. I want people to do whatever the f they want to do to make themselves happy. Like that to me is the secret of life. <laughs> don't mess with me. I won't mess with you. You know. Yeah. <sighs> but man, when, you know, it's affecting other people. That's not okay. 
it affects everyone when something happens. You can't help but think of everyone you know. Yeah. And by the way, there's also no judgment there because, like, I don't know whose fault any of this stuff was, but that's kind of the point. Like, you just have to you have to be prepared to avoid the other shit. Yeah. And um, sometimes when you're driving at the limit on a public road, you're no longer prepared to. It's it's kind of like just physics and shit. <laughs> oh, now your tire's all flattened, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> So, GVBC, there you go. Uh, I want to get everything out of the way pretty quickly here because I'm dying, 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 dying to have this conversation. Uh, Steve Mazon was dying to do Letterman. I'm dying to do the Letterman podcast here in the late night playset. Um, and we're going to talk all about HeCast. You know, I'm focusing on the Letterman of it all for obvious reasons. But um, HeCast and he changed it and uh, this whole app and this whole movement that they're creating – um, is very, very cool. You're going to want to get this book when you hear about it. Um, it's available on Amazon. I can't remember the name of it. What's it called? <laughs> the book is She Changed Me. She Changed Me. But it, when you flip... Two perspectives. When you flip it over, yeah. it's... it's uh, uh, oh, it's still... she. It's But isn't it He Changed Me on the other no, side? No, it's She Changed Me, One Ordeal, Two Perspectives. Okay. And uh, that's a different thing from He Changed It, but it is, it's all the same thing. We'll, yeah. we'll talk about it. Yeah, beautiful. All right, we'll so there's a book on Amazon it's called She Changed It. So if you're bored in the meantime, <clears throat> go dial that up. Um, all right, commercials and quick break for Mike Chisholm's favorite part of the show where we get to introduce the hot sauce. And, uh, and then we'll get these guys in here. So how is everything going on Instagram? Carissable. Oh. I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces over here, and somebody bought a badge before, and I didn't get a chance to say thank you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for buying badges. We appreciate it. Super cool. Flat six photographers here. Apex Dream Cars is here. Uh, B. Joy Benton. Hello, B. Joy Benton. Oh, that's awesome. I love you guys. We are so overdue for our breakfast. The Benton. Yeah. The Benton breakfast. We cheat. We we're so overdue. We even cheated on you once, like six months or so ago, with the kennels. Remember that? I do. They say, all which separates men and boys is the coverage for their toys. What types of toys are we talking about here? Cars and businesses and anything you... That's insure. right! <laughs> <laughs> anything. Anything that can be insured. Uh, anything of value, really, can be insured. That's really what it comes down to. What do you want to protect? Your home, your family, your life, your business, your equipment, your jet ski, your power drill. Your desk, your microphone, your chairs, <laughs> your wife. It's all this stuff. Everything's insurable. Uh, so, 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 since we're talking about insurance, licensed in most states, Sinclair Insurance <laughs> shops top providers so you get the best coverage for your toys. If I were you, I would go on the internet. You can call them up on the phone, but I would go on the internet and I would go to www. <clears throat> dot coverage for your toys dot com coverage for your toys dot com coverage for your toys dot com I wanted to make it seem like you were really rushing through it there I was gonna thank you for going so slow yeah got it <laughs> <laughs> check it's been a day <laughs> uh, and tell Jeff Sinclair that uh, Nicole says hello because I can't <laughs> although today it was pretty good. Um, uh, now, 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 it is my great pleasure to tell you about Series 1 Films. This episode has been brought to you in part by Series 1 Films. Series 1 Films helps automotive brands create engaging cinematic content for social media and advertising to grab and hold your ideal customer's attention. Check them out at Series1Films.com. Series1Films.com. <laughs> Series1films.com. Whoa, take it easy, buddy. <laughs> Yo, man. I get my memory's really short. The one is a number one. Do we do it? Are, are we done? <laughs> <laughs> Producer Mike. <laughs> oh, man. SoCal Splendor's here. The Brad Hansen Media's here. We're going to see some of you guys at... Uh, Damon McCarthy's here. We're going to see most of you guys up at uh, GBBC tomorrow. That's good stuff. Uh, try and keep it on the road, everybody. <laughs> um, we need a hashtag or a shirt or something. The back of the hat, I think, says it. Oh, I threw that on the floor. Damn it. <laughs> it is what it is. Didn't you hear? There it is. Oh, yeah. That was from Mike. Uh, okay. Let me make sure the bottle's facing the right way. I don't want to screw this up. 
This hot sauce is as big as fan is in the house. Um, <clears throat> we're going to get uh, Mike and we're gonna, Mike first is going to be in this chair right here when we come back after these brief words from Oh So Delicious Hot Sauce. The hot sauce, Mrs. Ryan. Made by bears. Oh, so delicious, it's the hot sauce made by bears. Garlic and serrano, mixed with love and care. You can put it on your eggs, pour it on your rice. It's great on a leg, it's better on a slice. It's oh, so delicious, it's the hot sauce made by bears. Oh, so delicious hot sauce, great on everything except oatmeal. Get your bottle today at ohsodelicious.org. One dollar from every bottle sold goes to the National Military Family Association. Turning on the mental video camera and just zeroing in. On I'm Johnny Lieberman, and you're watching LMP. What does LMP stand for? Late Night Place. Oh, yeah, that's right. I've been on there. Yeah, good show. <laughs> you should like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. There you go. What are you driving today? 63356B. Hey, 111. What are you driving today? better than I thought it would, Jay. <laughs> it's like when Gorilla Monsoon said, it's like the irresistible force meeting the immovable object. That's what this feels like. It is tremendous. It's like uh, Ray Stance and Peter Venkman see each other from across the room and they say, hey, let's cross the streams. Wow. That's what this is like. This I is. I don't know if I'm willing to go along with any of that, but well, I'm really okay. happy that you're excited. I am so excited. <laughs> I love this place. I love you guys. I am so happy to be here. This is awesome. Well, you're awesome. We're happy that you are finally here. Candy's getting the video of this, which is awesome. <laughs> uh, we should tell everybody that we did a whole, you know, we, we got the video. We showed it on Tuesday of you uh, seeing Star Wars Land for yeah. the first time. And that was like awesome because it was just, yeah. you could see all the pure emotion. Once I saw that, I go, oh my God, he's going to have the same thing when he gets in here. This is going to be crazy. So uh, for everyone else, the, how we set it up was, uh, Mike Chisholm's here, by the way. Everybody, Mike Chisholm, everybody. <laughs> Hey, everybody. So um, <laughs> we set it up. I, I met them outside and I said, all right, so I've turned off every single light in the studio so you can't see anything. And he was like, ah, uh, uh. <laughs> I said, I want to get you straight in the green room so we can get candy in the studio and then we'll turn everything back on and then we'll get you walking in for the first time. Uh, we did it. Of course, it's on our phones. And of course, we haven't done any of this yet because we never stopped doing this. But no. uh it was amazing. The at some point you were on the floor. I don't think you were kissing anything, but no. I mean, you really you took it all in, and it was an amazing uh, time. So tell everybody about it. Uh, yeah, this is like um, I'm at my sweet spot when I let my inner child get his grubby little hands on the wheel and uh, and and take control of things. And seeing this, I mean, picture your greatest Christmas morning moment where you just are in wonder. And that's 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 how I felt when I walked in here. And not the artifacts are like I am I'm I am absolutely in awe of the artifacts. But more so, though, the fact that these artifacts are part of something cooler in the sense that I feel the energy in this in this space and in this room. I love this room. I feel it over the ones and zeros. But, oh, man, do I feel it in here? It is awesome so there Dude. you go well that's awesome and then you're you, obviously then that's a, a home run for what we were going for but you also probably are our target audience <laughs> well, per, perhaps perhaps i'm i am the nose of the bullseye but not you know what a, few, a month ago whatever it was nile evans came in here and he was just doing this thing. i want one so bad i can't believe it like this is yeah a, yeah Everybody oh yeah that. and i knew what i was coming into 
but I'm still blown away. Nobody's crazy enough to actually do it. That it's was fantastic. Us. <laughs> you guys are you guys are all my favorite kind of crazy. This is well, this so is here, tremendous. So here we are. Now we're doing a show and we're trying to make something you know better of this world uh, with it by trying to you know spread love and positivity Absolutely. and stuff like that. You're doing the same thing. Um, this all kind of falls into the same pocket, but like I just want to know what's going on. Your <laughs> he composed himself to be a podcast host for a couple minutes. There, he's like, "Oh, what you do is amazing here." Like, <laughs> what's really going on? Uh, like inside, right yes. Now, I'm just enjoying the moment. I'm surfing. Uh, I'm surfing uh, the emotion of being present right now and just enjoying every second of this. That's where I'm right now. That's the best. Do you yeah, think anybody absolutely. was ever able to actually do that with Dave or because they only had six minutes and it was all wrangled down to the, the three stories they were supposed to tell or whatever, it got lost? See, some of those moments I think that were a little bit loosey-goosey were some of my favorite ones, like uh, especially in the last six weeks of the run. I think about well, Jerry well, Seinfeld. It was the best show there ever was. Yeah. I mean, the best. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, go ahead. No, yeah, absolutely. And by the way. the best late show there ever was. 100%. And if you read Scott Ryan's book, uh, The Last Days of Letterman, phenomenal. Because he goes through the entire, every episode in the last six weeks. Um, like, I think about Clooney handcuffing himself to Dave. I think about Jerry uh, Seinfeld on there. Switching spots. Switching he spots. Sitting doing at the, the run together through yeah. the, with the opening. That was actually, you're right. I forgot about that. You that know? was very cool. And I think that there was people that were really present at that point. Adam Sandler, the moment he's like about to go sing his song, he sits and he goes, I don't, I don't want to get up. I don't want to, I don't want, like yeah. that. He was present right there. Uh, for the uh, 31 years before that, no, I don't think anybody was present during those moments. I think there was a lot of uh, nervousness and crazy energy at that point. Yeah, I think the show <laughs> allowed it to get that way at the end because the sh it was almost like uh, they let the guard down. 100%. I totally I believe that. I think it used to just be such a tightly wound Freaking clock machine, whatever you want to. Yep. <laughs> personality. Whatever. With a lot of gears. Yeah. And a lot of real interesting gears, and you don't want to stop any of them, and you don't no. want to interrupt any of it. And machine's yeah. been in motion a long time. Leave it be. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm really happy you're here. I'm happy that you're taking it all in. I want to talk about the Letterman podcast. We can't yeah. just shoot the shit the whole time. I want to talk about the Letterman podcast uh, because you started it recently and you're yeah. killing it. You got great guests already, and, uh, and lots of good ones coming up too. And that's not the only thing you do. So I want to talk a little bit about those. Dave E centric things, yeah. so we can then get your wife in here and then talk about how you guys are making the the world a better place with with your efforts. Well, when she gets here, I'm going to shut up because yeah, like <laughs> I said, you and I can do this all day. I'm I'm so happy to see you. Uh, oh yeah, and this so is your first time meeting, present. right? Absolutely, and I'm so happy to see you. Um, the smile and the laugh is even better in person than it is. <laughs> Over the uh, over the airwaves, they um, showed up at four thirty, and they're like, well, "Where is she? Where is she?" I was like, "No, no, no! At four fifty nine, you might catch a glimpse. Otherwise, on the air. Otherwise, it's on the air." She's the Dave of this show when it comes to that. <laughs> they keep her hidden right to the very last minute. Uh, worth, we know what the worth people the wait. Want. Oh yeah, worth the wait. Um, no, no, the the Letterman podcast is phenomenal. Um, I love the timing. The synergy of what's happening here, what's happening there, what's happening in other spaces too. Yeah. And what it's, and enjoying, talk about being present, enjoying riding that wave and seeing what's going to come out of it and what's going to blossom. It's like you're seeing the flower come up and you don't know what color it's going to be yet, yeah. uh, but you know it's going to be a flower and you know it's going to be awesome. And that's how. Uh, it's and, budding. Oh, Starting it's budding. To bud, yeah. yeah. And uh, whether it's a daisy or whether it's a Venus flytrap, I'm just very excited to see. <laughs> oh yeah, great! What, what happens yeah. with it? It's, it's bigger than I thought it would be. <laughs> famous, <laughs> Seymour, famous. Yeah. Now. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> it's uh. Yeah. It's going well. No, I, I, and I, again, I talk about like a broken fucking record about how grateful I am to you for saying no. It, now the timing is right. You said this to me. You said uh, something in a conversation that we had. You said, "I think you're the guy." to host the Letterman podcast. And the moment you said that something switched in my head because I saw a late night place and I'm like, okay, well there, there's the guy that, that that's going to host the Letterman podcast. Yeah, We should give people a little bit is. of context here. What yeah. happened was you as the producer of this show were pitching me to do the Letterman podcast, yeah. whether me do it, we, we do, do it, it. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And that's very appealing. That sounds like a fun thing. Like that's, that sounds awesome. But the more I thought about it, if we had never done this, yes. if we were no, if we had not gone down this road and we're right. not this far down it, I would be your guy. I would still be in that place. I would still, I, I would be a better uh, co-host to you. Blah blah blah. I felt that while we were doing whatever we were doing, you had the enthusiasm. You had the. There's a fan DNA. 
yeah. that runs deep in you that I don't have and will never have. Right. And that's odd as hell when you see this room that I created and you understand that, oh, I've got the David Letterman stuff and I've been obsessed with it my whole life. Yeah. It's true, but it was never Dave. Right. Nobody gets that. That's yeah. why I was never a threat when I went to his house that day and gave him the microphone and all that stuff. Like, he didn't know that and the rest of the world didn't, but right. I do. I'm not a threat because he's not that kind of thing. I don't think you're a threat, but you have a little bit of that, like, oh, I need a little more. Oh, I need a little more. That addiction element yeah. to fandom where, like, you collect the sneakers. I, we had this conversation with Commissar. I'm not a collector. Yeah. By the way, this is five minutes on me not being the guy to do the Letterman podcast. So I said, <laughs> so I said to Mike, I go, you know, I thought about it all weekend. One sure. Day. And, I, and sure. I said to you on the phone, and I go, I don't think... I said the timing is right for the Letterman podcast. Yes. It's, it's time. I mean, it's Absolutely. literally time, not just, oh, it's been whatever. No. The Carson podcast is going off the air. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly 30 years later. Yep. You understand this, this syncopation that's happening. 100%. Here. I said, I think that the timing is right, but I'm not the guy. We're doing this thing that will become its own show. We're going we're gonna to have a show. When it comes to the podcast that's the fans about the about the thing, about yeah. Dave, you're the only guy I know. Don Giller is a big fan for different reasons. Sure. Anybody on the AFL group, uh, the Ultra Fan Letterman, is a big fan for different reasons. Yeah. You're actually a host. You're actually doing good things in the world. You have great intentions, great motivations. You have the wherewithal and the fucking head to do it. You're great at the job. It was supposed to be you. So God damn, I appreciate that. I'm really happy that you're doing it and that it's starting to happen so quickly because that's how it's supposed to. I, I appreciate that uh, very, very much. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit. Uh, you know, the, uh, and by the way, tell your wife she can make some noise if you want. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to. But I see her over there stifling her uh, enthusiasm. Oh, she can make noise, Jay. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I, I appreciate you saying that. I, when... I always thought it was a different person. I always thought, oh, someone's going to do this. Someone's going to do this. Someone's going to do this. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to somebody who worked for the show um, and, and, and after you and I spoke. And, uh, he said, Jay doesn't want to do it with me. He said, I should do it alone. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. It was like, it was like, <laughs> it was, it was uh, you know, I said it would be my dream job. And he goes, well, just do it. Yeah. He goes, do your dream job. You're not going to get paid for it necessarily. Or maybe you will, but not right away, whatever. You can go and you can do your dream job right now. And I can. And oh, I yeah. am. It is my dream job. It literally is my dream job. Like, when I was talking with Eddie Brill the other day, you you alluded to it. It was a great episode. It was great a great com great conversation. And the first of many, because I mean... You two were like old friends. Oh, great. my God. And not even touching the tip of the iceberg for what that guy has when you consider what the show is going to be. That's why you're a better podcast host. You kept it moving and firing along. I would have lingered on every little bit. Oh, tell me more about that. You know what I mean? I'm like deep dive guy. And, and I wanted like, no, to. let's keep it interesting. And I wanted to. Like, there were things that I wanted to talk about. It's like when you and I talk on the phone, we can go really, really granular on shit. That's <laughs> what I do. And, and yeah. I zoom in on, I zoom out on everything on life. So, like, when it comes to, oh, I found something I want to learn on, I go all the yeah. way hardcore on it with the with the micro. So, go anyway, ahead. Anyway, yeah. No, no, no. Just uh, uh, the idea that um, I, the thing that I love about this is that I am, it's another way that I can be a testament to people to say, go for your dreams. <laughs> Whatever oh, your dreams are, you, go for it. Yeah. This, and, this and, goes in line with what you're doing because you're walking the walk. Yes. Yes. That's the reason it's going to work. And that's why, folks, I, I just I, I would encourage anybody, if you're working a nine to five, figure out why, what makes you you, figure that out and move towards it. You don't have to quit your job necessarily to do it. You don't have to, you know, make a complete wholesale change, but figure out what makes you you and go walk towards it and see what happens and see what the universe, uh, if you're walking towards it, see what doors open, see what people mover you accidentally step on and you suddenly get shot forward <laughs> to it like, Oh my God, because that has been the last month for me and it feels amazing. And you guys are a part of that. And I just love being part of this family. That's, that's my whole thing is that I always just want to be part of this show too, uh, as well. I love oh, being you, part you're of, you're not going to grow too much. Is that the, I'm not going to grow away from, uh, in any way, shape or form. Um, well, I see and, them as two and, different things, unless you're going to turn the Letterman podcast into a little talk show. Cause we don't, that's the yeah. whole thing is we don't do a podcast. We're just on the podcast platform. We talk this. Okay. This is something you and I talk about too. I don't view this as a podcast at all. I view this as the most unique talk show out there. <laughs> Tell and, your friends. And, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> I like the way you think. <laughs> and, uh, I, yeah, this is, this is something completely different and it's something that I always 
want to be part of the late night playset family. Yeah. I, I love this. Well, you know this thing is going uh, – you know there's other things happening behind the scenes that other people will know about soon as we can make announcements and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but things are definitely happening, mm-hmm. and uh, and you're already making plans to be part of those things. So until you stop making plans with some of the future things that we have going on, I'm going to assume you're on long yeah. for the ride. Yeah, that ain't if it, stopping. If it becomes, oh, you know what? I can't do the Cleveland show or the Dallas show <laughs> or the Atlanta show. It's going to be like, well, wait, something's going on here if he, if he can't can't do the tour. Whoops! Did I make it? Did I let a cat out of the bag? Babe, well, can I do meow. the? Can I do the? Daisy. Can I do the Cleveland do show? Can I do it? Yeah, all of them. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> now we're good. I love it. <laughs> you guys support each other in so such, so many ways. You even wrote a book together. We did. Should we get her in here? Do you yeah. want to do that? Yeah. We, we can keep talking about everything, but no, 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 I figure no. I don't want to waste too much time. I just wanted to have you to have some footage of just you in here. On the- I, I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> All right. So with that, here comes Candace Chisholm, right? Oh, what? Wow. That's what you do, right? You move over. Wow. I mean, what a gentleman. <laughs> Howard Stern moved over when Rickles showed up. Wow. All right. I'm Rickles. That's what I heard. <laughs> we'll figure this yeah, out. Right? Hi, Candy. Hi, guys. It's so good. To we've never had a sit. second guest. What? We've had two guests, but we've never had like the move down couch thing, have we? Not that I can recall. Not that I remember. This is fun. Oh, Feels like legit. That. Pretty sure that's talk when show that etiquette. I think that's that how it cherry. works. Oh, it is. <laughs> All I know is I want you guys to talk to the missus because the framing of the shot is killing me. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> missus to missus, everybody say hello. It's so Hi. great to meet you. Thanks. You too. Oh. I, I watch you and I love your laugh and he's right. It's better in person. That's great to hear. It's <laughs> contagious. Like, Good. straight up. Yeah. Then if I can give that, that's... What I'm gonna. <laughs> I mean, I love whatever. it. How long have you been in town? Uh, since Friday? It yeah. feels like a long time because a lot, it was all at Disney. Right. <laughs> that's it. So <clears throat> that's, I think that doubles. It's like, it's not like dog years. If you're one day in Disney, it's seven. <laughs> Oh, I think, oh Disney's wow! Rough. Disney's rough. Wow. I think I have. Can I play the? Can I play the footage of uh, of Mike discovering? Yeah, Star Wars please land do. Again? All right, please so, do. Yeah, right. <laughs> do we have that queued up? Roll it, Hal. Roll it, Hal. Okay, here we go. Wait, wait. Look at that face. This is so good. Look at that face. <laughs> He's walking so fast. Too. Can you keep up. No, you were laughing. I know, I was trying to get ahead of him and it was so are. difficult. Here we are. They're just streaming. <laughs> and under his breath it was, I can't believe this exists. I can't believe this exists. Yes. It's, uh, it's seeing it for, for in real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Seeing it for real. Just, uh, just tears. We were talking through all of that, but that, that, was, that was so yeah. awesome. I love <laughs> that video. It shows... It shows your willingness to be vulnerable. Like, you knew she was videotaping. You go, stop that! Stop that! Stop oh. that! You know, nothing. No. Oh, no. I was tunnel visioned in that moment. <laughs> Just like I'm kind of tunnel visioned right now. Um, yeah, I know. But it was funny because that about three or four seconds after that video stopped, I saw the Millennium Falcon in between two buildings and I literally took Ran. off like a bullet. I was just, <gasps> I just we're like, reckless yeah, abandon. We're this way. <laughs> yeah. Like oh. like full oh. tilt. Like didn't... it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. I, I wish I could have seen the whole thing, but I'm also kinda of glad I didn't because in my head it's probably way but you know, I in my head it's Peter Griffin running over there in double time, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah. So good. Um thank you for sharing that with us. And then I'm just gonna hold this up to the Instagram but I don't think There'll be audio, but we have the same thing here. Oh, God. Oh, no, that was hers. Candy, all right. So, Candy, you've got so your what hand happened hand. was, I forgot. I forgot this even happened. <laughs> so what happened was I brought her in to just, she was supposed to just get in here and like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. The same thing happened to <laughs> yeah, her. She yeah. started to like cry and stuff. Oh, that's true. I totally. completely forgot. Do you, need, do you need the video? Oh, oh. It's, it's all right. I've got, got it. I just think the whole thing's Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. We put the theme. He put the theme right, you know, for the. I'll, I'll have to. Uh, we'll yeah, have to, to add do this it. better. Yeah, we'll have to do this better because I want everyone to actually experience it properly. <laughs> you didn't know what to do. <laughs> Down. Down on there. Oh, Joe. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> oh, buddy. Oh. It warms my heart. It warms my heart. I have that the, microphone on my shoulder. I feel like yeah. we did this to give people that experience. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. It seems like you went All through a lot you. of effort for this little uh Well, otherwise, Canadian what bumpkin. the hell is this for, this little talk show experience that we do here <sighs> twice a week? It's amazing. Like, again, I just, I can't even... Let's see. Some other fans of yours are here. Irene Hoffman says, hurry. Oh, that was from earlier. Oh, right on. Let's see now. She says, uh, awesome. I woke the kids and phoned the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure Rusty's here, too. Give Rusty she a shout-out. there. So, yeah. like, awesome. this is where we got to figure out, like, and, and, and the, like, Rusty's, uh, he was messaging me earlier today and a few other people. I just. There's another Letterman podcast entitled Wake the Kids, Phone the Neighbors, and Rusty is one of the. Bam, you got yeah. it. There you go. Yeah. No, so go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, the idea of the uh, the LPN, you know, the Letterman Podcast Network and what that looks like. And I think about Rogan and, and, and when he and all those uh, Joey Diaz and all those other comics, they came up with Death Squad. You know, it wasn't really a, a thing. And then it became a thing where all these guys were associated with with that group. And I just love that organically, talking about the flower that's blooming, there's a group showing up. <laughs> And we all want to be a part of it. The time you're like you've said it right from the start. The timing could not be better. And we're back to Letterman again. Sorry, babe. Don't be. People <laughs> thought we were. People thought we were nuts when we when we started. Like when this started to lean Letterman, it was because I had the personal story that mm. is sort of undeniable. But yeah. But that doesn't equate to a lifelong attachment. You know what I mean? No. And then the timing of oh, why do this now? Everything just kind of had. A, there was a weird. There's a vibe happening. There's a thing going on. And, uh, and whatever it is, I just see, because we were talking about before in the green room, the motivations and intentions are pure. It's all going to work out. So yeah. now I'm going to shut the fuck up, and I want to hear about you guys. <laughs> Please don't stop talking. Please don't stop talking. I'm happy you're here. Please tell me about the book. Please tell me about the podcast that he does, but it's, also, it's, for, it's for your thing. I don't know how it all works. Tell us about it. Well, they're all, um, <clears throat> they're all kind of separate, but they all intertwine. I guess is what, but it's funny because when I was sitting here watching this, this is actually, to be honest, he changed it is about guys being able to do what you guys have done and been able to do naturally. Aw. Oh, sorry. No, I just want to make sure they hear Thank this beautiful you. message. Keep going. But it's true because you guys kind of found each other and you found each other. Mike is like, he he's found a, me. Well, he's a unicorn. Like yeah. he is the most unique individual on the planet in uh, such a good way though. Like, he is like you know the things that made me love him there's many but like he has so much like the sneakers and letterman and he loves mercedes and the la kings i mean he tattooed one time we have our our, our best friends are he's a good he's we're canadian eh? so yeah yeah, yeah. so it's that, uh eh? it's all about the hockey so our best one of our best friends he's you know our bc team he's a big fan and when when they were getting to know each other. He had tattooed this little um, emblem on his cheek because our teams were playing. Mm -hmm. And Mike's like, oh, yeah, whips off his shirt and has his big Im tattoo on the back. Yeah, of the LA Kings. <laughs> and, and that's because he gives everything his love. Like yeah, that's that. what I was saying before. Like the, the, there's a fan obsession thing going on because right. you connect to it and then you give it your all. All of it. Yeah. And so, you know, <laughs> like that's not it's relatable. I, I get it. It is, really but not it. a lot of guys, I think, do that. Right? Uh, you know, I, I think a lot. I think people aren't maybe willing to admit it. I think yeah. probably more guys than we think do, but they don't but even sort of know how siloed, to attach to it. There's a right? lot of hidden passion out there, exactly. and that's it, tapping into it. In the, in the right way once in a while is really good. It is. It's, it's just so good. You know, when we did our research, like, so this goes back a few years, right? I, I actually used to be in a, in a not-for-profit for women and children, and it was really great and very satisfying. But there were so many times I would get calls for from men being like, do you have any sort of do you have any resources for guys? Like, what if a guy's going through this? And we didn't have the bandwidth for that, mm -hmm. you know, and... The, Sorry, we got all these bras. Sorry, the yeah, out. right? Like, Jeez. the babies take the precedence, right? Yeah. But then when I exited that charity, I was like, you know, there's something there. So I started looking into it, and there wasn't a lot around. And when we, when we did all of the research on it, it kind of all boiled back to the same thing. It didn't matter who it was. We, we interviewed people who are who from CEOs and, and, and people who were street folk. Like, 
it didn't matter. It, the whole thing was the same, and it came down to loneliness and purpose. Mm. And so we just wanted to create a spot where they could connect. And like Mike said, find your passion and, and find something that makes you happy. Light your light. Light That's your light. I always say whenever he's talking to me about it, it's like you just got to find whatever lights your light and then just yeah. keep that light lit. Yeah. It's, it's hard. But it is once hard. you find it, it's almost like this crazy gift of like, oh, I didn't know it could be this easy. Yeah. Like it's still work. You still yeah. have to grind. There's always a grind. But like doing what you love is what a gift. But you know, it is. It, but I think we all just, um, and men tend to really get stuck into this spot of um, looking after their families and shouldering a lot of responsibility, which is great. But they don't me necessarily always There's take the time. There's not an outlet if they don't play pool and drink beer with the guts. Right. It's got to be balanced. Everything is balanced. It's got to be balanced. Life is balanced. It's got to be balanced. It's important. Yeah. So we wanted to create something like that and something that um, got on the front side of of wellness. Mm. Like not just a reactionary care. Everything is reactionary, right? You don't, right. You don't take care of yourself until somebody tells you maybe that you need to. Or you don't you know, save money until you need to, <laughs> right? All of the above. All We're of the above. imperfect humans. Yeah. Um, but I, this is kind of what I was saying about our podcast and then also your little movement here. I didn't mean to be your little movement. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All <laughs> yeah, good. This, All good. Th- yeah. This endeavor that's yeah. going to be a very big thing. Thank you. Um, it seems like the right time. Yeah. It seems like you started this a couple of years ago, which was ahead of the whole good vibes, positivity, love in the world thing. Like the world's catching up. But yeah. We've been broadcasting this for a few years now. We were sort of like the crazy ones for a little totally we got that a lot so tell us about that well we you know we'd be talking to people and they they were like you're doing what like that that's never gonna yeah good luck with that yeah it was i always say investors yeah exactly (laughs) this is exactly right and i always used to say i'm like it's not i get it not low-hanging fruit but the orchard is full okay so we we were here and we you know, that's the thing. Like, we, we talk, even like you look at Disney. Every time we walked around Disney, we kept saying, like, can you imagine the imagination this man had to have to actually be able to say, this is what I want to do? People <laughs> would have thought he was, like, off his rocker. The world was nothing but small towns. He's like, no, 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 you're going to come to my small <laughs> yeah, town. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to buy all my stuff. Right. <laughs> you're going to ride on my tractor. Right? <laughs> this machine shows up. It doesn't make any sense. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and Yeah. So, yeah, that's how we feel. We're, we're like, you know, we just had to keep sticking it out and sticking it out. And it wasn't easy. It's not easy. I mean, we're still grinding. Yeah. But what would we do without the grind? Every t- every day where I get, like today was a, one of those grind days. Right, it yeah. really was in every side and I didn't finish anything I tried to. But the alternative is, oh, what, I'm doing some other job that I hate right. all of the tasks I'm doing? Like, no, I, everything I was involved in today, I, I love. Yeah. I'm so grateful. Yeah. So you got to grind one way or the other. Why wouldn't you grind towards something that you like? By the way, hashtag here's a little it. hashtag life hack doesn't matter what you grind on it will pay dividends it, it will. doesn't matter yeah. what you grind there will. will be varying degrees of differences but y- you can't grind on anything and not get results you just can't no That's my opinion anyway. no but the biggest thing i think is is that you it goes right back to the belief system of who you are and like being able to that you are the one to do it. and i think that's a struggle sometimes for the grind is that people Like, you know, it's easy to be like, well, why me? Why should I be the one to do that? Right. And that's Uh, when you need to really surround yourself. That's the ego. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She she sits right here. She's like, sit down, baby girl. (laughs) (laughs) Like, mm -hmm. (laughs) she only doesn't say it as nicely as that. <laughs> but but you know it's okay it's it's but do you part have the guardian angel mm-hmm. or whatever on the other side that's saying like oh relax everything's fine just take a moment to breathe <laughs> oh that's him he says it quite like that actually <laughs> well yeah <laughs> I've talked to him a time now he's my biggest cheerleader and he's always he's like no baby we got this like and, and it's you know thankfully we um, do that most of the times on opposite days which is great you know if I oh, support if, each other yeah, yeah yeah like if I'm really low like and that's actually you know you talked about the book. So the book was because our granddaughter uh, was diagnosed with cancer. Please, tell us the story. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me. So she was diagnosed with cancer when she was 18 months old. Uh, the most... That is yours. This guy's not used to a visual medium. Oh, <laughs> oh, you... That is yours. <clears throat> oh, th- well, oh, yeah. Well, we bought it for you. Yeah. Read it. Don't read it. Read uh, it. Do you want uh, to somebody who's, who, it. Hand it off to somebody who's going through something. Uh, anyway, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. So this is one side. And yeah. Then, look at <clears throat> flip it Check over. Check out. So how that plays into he changed it is just how men and women think differently. Wait a second. This is the first I'm hearing of this. What? <laughs> so, wait. Is this just a this repackage is breaking, Mars and Venus from the 80s? Breaking news. She's yes, it is. Venus, he's from Rebrand. Mars. I've already read this Rebrand. one. I already know this one. No. My mom had this. Yeah. 
<laughs> Only it's opposite now. Oh, that's right. <laughs> right. Just kidding. It um, is actually. That's a very good point, though, because the men are getting more feminine and the women are rising in power and stuff. That's a very interesting point. Well, you know, it was what was interesting about that was so when when Alara was diagnosed with cancer. Um, I'm sorry, really. No, it's okay. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, she's amazing, and <laughs> she's a beast. Absolutely, it's she's great that we can laugh She killed about it, and she can. was um, she was fantastic. She's yeah, we la- we we jack wild. And I of course know that, but I'm stepping all over your beautiful You're story. You're not. Oh, you know. Wait till you see it back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the? F- <laughs> so funny. I understand what you just meant by that. Um, anyways, yeah. So <laughs> it doesn't feel like it, but I assure you, I am. It's awful, and I know it. And I'm really sorry. I, feel like I did just it twice, and I felt I knew what you're talking about. Yeah, give me that picture too. I'll hold everything up sure. while she tells these stories. There you go. I'll, I'll give everyone these Letterman visuals. What we talk about? We talk about this beautiful story. <laughs> no, all right. So obviously, she's great now. Oh yeah, she's yeah. awesome. Oh yeah. But it was the impetus for. Yeah, it was because when we were going through it, it was obviously something that was one of our biggest struggles. I mean, it's, you know, you don't expect anything like that. And, and you know, you, the whole story is, is interesting. It was, she was diagnosed on Christmas Eve and I'm the one, you know, I found the, the, the lump. It was just crazy. Like, it was crazy how it worked out. However, what we started seeing was that there was all of these sort of blessings and these lessons that were piling up. Mm-hmm. And we thought that's, that's, not coincidental anymore that is that's something real and so that's what we wanted to write about were you always that type of person or was it that enough had fucking happened in your life where you just gave up and then you give in and you go along for the ride of whatever's happening is happening i'm only asking because we went through something similar and that's sort of how we arrived there yeah i i think it was maybe a combination of a couple of those things but honestly like mike is a very positive guy He's very positive thinker. Like, uh, uh, mm-hmm. I know. So. I, you it's know, I'll tell the story because this is like, but it's true. Like, I mean, when you should show the Letterman pictures, it'd be like that too. But like, we were married three months. It's a second marriage, right? So we were married three months. What? And, yeah. Controversy. <laughs> Scandal. You are not the father. Trouble. <laughs> oh. Maury, Maury, Maury. <laughs> those DNA results. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so we were married three months and he says to me, and that's LA Kings were going to the cup for the first time. Oh, jeez. Right? Wait, the first time? 2012. First time in like, I don't know, in 700 way, okay, years. I, but I don't know. When did, when did <laughs> it? Oh, no. Yeah, since 93. All right. So almost 700. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he says to me, he's like, I, I have to go. I'm like, yeah, go. Great. And he said to me, he goes, when I meet Luke Robitaille, Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I meet Luke Robitaille, who is like somebody in He's the franchise, the one guy that we could have gotten him full access to. <laughs> our our friend ran his front office. No he, way! He ended up managing the team. He's the oh. president. He still is the president. Oh well, there you go. Yeah. Well, we know who somebody on that. So Mike we'll, we'll probably be able to help you out in the future. Everything like his snaps. Come, come during hockey season sometime. Firing They're playing right now. Game on Sunday night in the playoffs. Oh, is it still hockey season? It's playoffs. <laughs> oh, sorry, we don't follow it anymore. She doesn't, she, she used to play, not really? as much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. She played yeah. for University of Michigan. I'm, we're pouncing all around here. I, <laughs> that's what I'm so sorry. Happily. Happily. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> he said, when I get a picture, when I when I meet Luke, I'm going to ask him this, this, and this. So we were married three months. You know, we've known each other a long time, but I mean, I really hadn't experienced the full Mike Chisholm effect yet in my oh. life. But you saw the tattoos and stuff, right? Or did he not tattoos have those? Tattoos didn't then. exist then. Oh, no. wow. So then <laughs> I said. He was yet to live his best oh, life. Oh, and I said, okay, baby. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. I mean, I was that girl. Oh, show. And, uh, and, and he landed, and three hours later, there was a picture of him and Luke on my phone. And I was like... So you didn't so. think it would happen because no. you hadn't seen the powers of his manifestation yet? No. Is that what's going on? Yeah, and, okay. I, and I didn't really... You were like, oh, sure, babe. Like, sure, yeah, yeah that's why I was like, happen. oh, you're so cute. Mm. But meanwhile, he's like, no, I'm going to go make this happen. It's like pow, 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 coming out of his brain. Right, exactly. Need I exhibit A here? Exhibit A. <laughs> so, so that's that's. I fucking love that picture. I've learned this in the last ten years. T- Mike, real quick, it. tell us this picture. <coughs> um, <clears throat> well, you know what? If you uh, actually, if you follow the Letterman podcast, uh, on Saturday we've got an episode drops, and the episode is called the letter, the letter manifesto, and that's me telling the entire story of how that picture, uh, culminating into that picture. 
and then evolving into the Letterman podcast, actually. But uh, the truncated version is uh, we went to see Dave a month before he retired. And um, similar thing to the, the L.A. King story, uh, just wanted some sort of interaction with Dave. And uh, as, as enthusiasts of Dave know, he can be um, persnickety. And maybe, and maybe hard to access sometimes. And, uh, I didn't find that at all. You, know, <laughs> <laughs> you sure didn't, which is why I love oh, that awesome. story so much. I'm sorry. I but just no, worked up great sorry. Tuesday. He we was very nice to me. Yeah. We, well, hopefully Saturday. I hope Saturday I can say the same thing because I've got uh, two copies of that picture right there. And I've got the Sharpie already purchased, and, and hopefully I'll get him to, to sign that. We can put it up in the podcast studio. And uh, Oh, these are for him to sign. Those are for him to sign. Oh, I see. You're um, going to become an autograph collector, too. Well, <laughs> so... Do okay. you want to host the man's think, podcast, or do you want to collect his socks? I think there's a little judgment in that. <laughs> no, I'm asking. I, yeah. Sometimes I poke at him so, because he yeah, often has no, answers. And it's good. It's good. Like, uh, I, I, There's no better analogy for this um, to me. I'm a big fan of hip-hop, I, especially 90s hip-hop. I love Public Enemy. And uh, I look yeah. at, I look at uh, Chuck D., and I look at Flava Flav, and, and that's how I see it. That's how I see it. The number one fan of Public Enemy is Flava Flav. I'm glad I'm but not. He's also part I got of that bad neck, you know. <laughs> Never be able to handle it. Yeah. And then there's Chuck D, who is just you know tunnel vision forward, the innovator, the, the in, in my opinion, the, one of the greatest MCs in, in history. Whoa! But, uh, I'll take it. All right, I'm that. And guy. that's you. You're that guy. Yeah, well, I don't you're that guy. Well, I know, and that's part of. Okay, see what you just did there—that shaking of the head. That's Dave too. Like you can't, you don't take that praise. You just want to drive forward and you want to get better and you want to learn the thing you don't know how to do. And you want to, uh, you just have that. Um, at least that's what I, that's my right. take on it. No, you're right. I don't know if Dave has it, but you're right about me having it. I mean, you've got my number for sure. Uh, sometimes, but I'm still learning it. So none, but of, anyway, these are, anyway, none so, of these are for us in our green room. Uh, well, there's two there. <laughs> no, you get them signed. If one gets, at some point, please no. send us one of these <clears> and then one we'll gets, put it up in the green room. I'll get it framed and we'll put it up in the green room. All That'd right. be nice. Well, the plan was is to get two signatures, one for you, one for me. Stop doing that. that I don't need it. All you right. should get both of them if they're signed. I don't want the oh, signed one. <laughs> I, it's lost and on that's me. The part People that who want that's... that stuff should get it. I'm not the guy who cares. Everyone thinks, oh, you're such a big Letterman fan. you got to have the desk and everything. I don't care. I tried to give this stuff to Commissar. He wasn't getting it. Yes. He doesn't get it. I've yes. tried to give this to him twice. Once five years ago when he didn't even know who I was and wouldn't take my calls. And then once... Lately, you know, mm -hmm. it's very bizarre how some people are either on the same frequency or not. You are clearly on the same frequency. The stuff you have been able to manifest. Now, back to the story yes, here. Yes, sorry, yeah. No, no, the Luke Robitaille was a good start, but the same thing happened here, and yeah. it's going to happen this week as well, so I want to let people know. Well, and you're right beside me in that picture. How, how awesome was that night? Like, it was just... Did you think that night... Because the whole thing started with us getting... Okay, we got to get a picture behind Dave's desk. Right, that was how it started. Oh, I wish I had that loaded up. Damn and then, uh, and, and we do. So if you go to if you go to our Facebooks or whatever, uh, our the, my Facebook, it's it's still on there. Um, and then sometimes, and this is the one thing that another thing that I've learned too oh. is that, yeah, that sometimes if you grip too hard, obviously stuff falls out. But if you just kind of let things go. Um, magical things can happen. Now, wait a second. Did you always have that or? Well, that actual analogy I gave to him yesterday. So and, and he has as well. <laughs> no, I'm just asking because I feel I because sometimes we have to we both we struggle with that. Yeah, totally. So the, the picture of us behind the desk, um, that was hard work, manifestation, but also a lot of actions to make that happen. The universe then said, "Hold my beer. I'm going to give you something even better." And that moment where Dave and I had our interaction. The moment where I made him laugh is one of the greatest moments of my entire life. Because, again, you know, for snickety, I actually made him I, – I, I, I fired back with something that he said to me, and I made him laugh for a second. And then he fired right back, and then he used me as a comedy speed bag. And I'm – it but and the then and then they talk, this was all during the warm up. But then he referenced referenced it during the show as well, and then it was a whole big moment. He so. did, and then a New York Times Pulitzer Prize winning photographer who happened to be doing a spread on Dave and happened to be there that night took a shot of the moment, put it in the New York Times and on the New Yorker, which the New Yorker is where we discovered it. And uh, I now have one of the greatest moments of my entire life immortalized beautifully. Um, this. This was this was the last couple of weeks of the show. Yeah. And this is clearly it's not like this photo was cropped. This is the photo that was in the New Yorker and the New York yeah. Times. Yeah. So this literally is uh you. Yeah. <laughs> and Candace, I can't quite see you there, but no, I just my hands. But literally yeah. this is a picture of <clears throat> yeah. a guy 
which we now know is you, and clearly David Letterman. Yeah. yeah. Closing up the show, closing yeah. up shop here. Yeah. And he's talking to Paul right there saying, Paul, Canadians are supposed to be polite. This guy here has called me a brat and a bunch of other things. He's got the audience just <laughs> laughing at me like crazy, and which is I was in my – But you know what? Life. I have to say something in here because this is, I think, what – you know, sometimes people, when they talk about manifesting, it's like, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. Crystal ball and all that. Yeah. Nobody, like Mike, so there's, I know there's different kinds of manifesting, but the amount of steps and, and things that he puts together to get to this part is like nothing short of um, magical. Mm. Like it's not just, I want this to happen. It goes back months where he's calling, you know, CBS Studios about the tickets. And then we're there and he's talking to Vinny in the back. And then he's and he's making friends, which he does very, very well. Yeah. Um, he won me over. I, ta- right? I You know the story. Yeah. At first I was like, I don't know what to do with this guy. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> get crazy. <that> <laughs> oh. get but you lot. see my love and affection for I him know. now. He broke through my That's shell. That's his magic powers. It is. That's what... And... and, and that's what's so beautiful about what he does is that he like that's a lot of work though it's not just that it in in a good way winning people over <laughs> See, it's, it's a lot of work but it's not okay and this is where <clears throat> to me that's not and 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 you want to talk about like he cast right yeah how do i contribute to he changed it i mean candy's going to change the world she's building this amazing go to he changed it.com if you want to see what candy's building it's 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 an app for men uh to go um and essentially, it is if you use the analogy of um, how doing yoga can prevent trips later to the emergency room uh, from a health perspective, that's what he changed it is. It's preventative it's, maintenance. Preventative, preventative maintenance. Um, and yeah. I mean, the stats Prevention are, in your pocket. Prevent, there you go. Um, <laughs> how do I support I that? Wait a second. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Not that way. Although, if that works, fine, whatever. <laughs> just, it's timely right now. Yeah. Well, and I, she's changing the world. And I mean, she's her and her team of people are doing these things and how can I help? Well, this is where the giftings come in. I host eCast and um, I can have a guy either in the studio um, or on the other end of the, uh, the ones and zeros. And um, I can make a connection very, very quickly. And within there, there are certain people who I admire as broadcasters who have this gift. Howard Stern is one of them. Um, for some reason, Howard Stern can get, anybody within a few minutes to talk about the most intimate details of their entire life and just have them. So the, the subjects on he cast, um, aren't necessarily like we, we've had guys on there who talk about losing their, their infant child. We've had guys who talk about, there's one guy that, that the podcast is about to drop in a, in a, in a week, as soon as we get back, um, who has suffered from depression for 45 years oh. and he is cerebral. Like he is a, and he's a very successful man. And so he has gone down for 45 years to try and find ways to deal with his depression. And I mean, you know, and it's not all like that. Sometimes like when you were on, we were talking about manifesting and, and, and let's move towards our dreams and figure out your purpose. And it's all these things. So I can take the <laughs> giftings mean, that I have. <laughs> That's not what we talked about. I mean, <laughs> I mean did. if you want, if, if you, you want to back. fucking frame it that way. <laughs> oh. I found out you were a Letterman fan and then we went hardcore on my oh fucking my on your story. No, but that story... <laughs> yes, I manifested it. You're right, but that's you're painting it with oh, a beautiful Jay, brush. I, I, no, he's Jay, wrapping Jay, Jay. it up. I can't he's wait. In a limbo. If you're yeah. making something good out of what I did, my my big old life, big mistake of my life that I did as a kid. If you're making something good out of it, and great, no, great. I, I'm that's not. Some great comments on that. I'm not. I can't wait for the end of that story. Oh, and, it's a book, and, and it's, it's a, a book, book end for sure. Oh, oh, it is it ever, and it gives me goosebumps just even thinking about it. I I love it so much. Um. But we, we have on HeCast, I take that, you call it a superpower or whatever, I just, for whatever reason, have been able to connect with, I want to say it's 75% of people. And then there's, you, you know, know 15, you 10 or 15 that kind of stay away going, what, what's this guy? And then there's 10% that flat out think I'm... Right. Uh, and you'll never yeah. connect with those ones. No. No, I'll never but connect do, with them. You don't really, okay. you can, you haven't figured out the formula to any of that, formula, the formula to any of this stuff? <laughs> I'm French. <laughs> it's... <laughs> I'm losing my shit today. <laughs> you haven't figured out the formula to this. You don't understand why. I look at you and it's plain as day why that happens. And you don't. You tell me what you think. Know. I, I want to hear that. Like, I, I, well, it's, it's my very bold opinion yeah. that because you are so honest and so open and lead with your heart. Yes. Vulnerable. Yeah. Vulnerable to like, it. If people don't know what to make of it, I'm. Yeah. I'm, I'm similar. Yeah. 
I, I think I might wrangle it differently, not better, but differently than you. It comes out differently, maybe. But I, I, I get it, and I can see it in you for sure. And I, it's a yeah. superpower because you, people, people go home probably after your podcast. Go, I can't believe I talked about that stuff. Mark Knock off me left. He goes, Oh, I said too much. Yeah. <laughs> Every single person who leaves here yes. goes, Oh, I can't yeah. believe it. Yes. And I don't do half of what you do. We get that all the time. The first 20 that. episodes of HeCast, and it's funny, it became almost a running joke. There were two things that came up in almost every single episode, no matter who we had on, whether it was a, a life coach or somebody who was talking about a story, uh, maybe about being separated from, from, from their kids because of a, an ugly divorce, that kind of a thing. Um, vulnerability and awareness were the two things that came up in every single episode for the first it was like 25 episodes. Then yeah. that, that mean, must just, mean that you needed to hear it for some reason. Uh, yeah, I, I suppose so. You know uh, what I mean? Like there's, yeah. it happens for whatever reason yes. or, your, or your first few viewers or whatever. There's some reason for that. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, but anyway, yeah, vulnerability is a huge, it, it is a huge one. And, and I am. Don't the ever The way I look it. at it is, oh, I, I don't plan on Life's too damn short. Like I'm a gigantic Los Angeles Kings fan. I'll tell anybody who wants to listen to that. That's who I am. And and I've always been that way. And there's an example. <laughs> you see, okay. you see Sean Avery yeah, on the oh yeah. wall there. Oh, yeah. He's going to do the show. He, wants, uh, he said he crazy. would do the show. That's so good. That's so good. I can't wait to help produce that one. Yeah. Can't wait to help <laughs> You'll part need of that to because I don't know anything about sports or I hockey or I worked with him for so long and brought the LA Kings. Like, so I, get, I remember. That's it's so all crazy. kismet. That is. It's all kismet. It's yeah. And I'm just, I, and again, that was broken our major record. outlet. Who's going to hockey fans? The hockey games all the time. Sorry. Mm. And that's where, like, and I'm a broken record. I say it. I say it to the point where I annoy him sometimes. I feel like I'm annoying. I don't. I don't want to speak for you. Where I talk about how grateful I am. <laughs> Just okay. We know you're grateful. We get it. <laughs> no, that am. happened on the it's, show, and I felt comes... badly about it. And Don Giller called me out about it too, which is pretty funny because he's <laughs> quite the critic. Shout um, out to Don Giller. Hey man, thanks for uh, building the curating the collection. How do you think he is right now? I, I, I worry about him not be, worry about him is a crazy thing to say, but like yeah, that no, channel was so much of he put so much fucking effort into it. And like, I'm sure he's getting dividends for that work now, but like, that's never why he was doing it. He was doing it, it because he loved doing it. I think, yes. I, again, a, I don't know. Absolutely. So I, I kind of. Well, I'll tell you this. I hope if something I, comes up. I've never. Okay. I haven't, I haven't reached out to him and talked about this to him. I've, I've you know, we've talked about other things sometimes a little bit, but. Um, the idea, um, you know, Eddie Real was on the show the other day and he referenced a couple of the times that he performed and those aren't online. I've got a guy who came on and talked about, uh, how Elle McPherson sat beside him and there was a, there was a bit that went back and forth. Um, I wish I knew Don better. I wish there was a way that we could say, okay, well, are, are you still able to take little clips and throw them on to your channel? Because I would love the, if we reference stuff in the are podcast. Asked and answered, right? Well, eh, sort of, not really. Um, I'm just, we're just kind of spitballing right now. Oh, it would be cool if. Well, Don's. I mean, just go ahead. I want to hear how it would be cool, but also he's yeah. he's been very clear and vocal about why he's not posting right now. For sure, um, and and that's cool. That that good for him. Now, would but in he the be future, playing could inside? There be yeah, a, would he? Yes, be playing, we'll all find that out, and that would be great. And will <laughs> I don't be great. think he's dropped it. No. <laughs> I certainly hope not. What are you shitting me? I'm, what do you move on after forty years? <laughs> no, but not, not, I mean, it would. It would. I hope that he hasn't dropped it in the way where he has now moved in behind the scenes, and that's oh. where his. That's well, where that's his interesting because I, I. That's interesting. That's a good point. Um, that's. A, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you, know. you kind of don't want him too forefront, but you don't want him to disappear. Like no. Don's was always kind of the right amount of Don's, and Don's he always is, knew that. Oh yeah. Um, you can talk about gratefulness. I mean, for when Dave went <laughs> quiet, <do> when Dave <laughs> went quiet for the, after 2015, um, that channel, I mean, that channel kept that. There was alive. another one for a little bit too, a Canadian kid. And I was watching his shit. And that's actually where I got the clip about them. That's actually how it all happened. You're right. I completely forgot about this. That the, when Dave went off the air in 2015, yeah. there was a couple of YouTube channels. There were yeah. a couple of YouTube channels. Learn my grammar. And uh, and anyway, one of the kids had put up the the new set night, and it was the first time I'd seen that uh, show. The clip of him in, talking about the in, microphone being stolen. In twenty, yeah, thanks. Like in twenty <laughs> something years. <laughs> Here, you want to see it? Here it is. Yeah, yeah roll it, Hal. Oh, roll it, Hal. <laughs> Once you get her started, by uh, God, you no just, there's no stopping her. 
I've noticed two problems with the new set. What? Well, one, uh, this microphone is higher than it needs to be. Now, what's that about? Well, it's because the other microphone, the one that's been on the desk for two and a half years here and uh, 13 and a half years at NBC, last night that was stolen. Uh, you're kidding. Now, that was stolen. So, <laughs> so we had to replace it with this other uh, new, and it occurs to me that we stole that microphone from NBC. That's so, exactly. you know, and the other thing is there's no window here now, so when I do this, what do we get? See? We, we used to have some kind of satisfying sound effect that... I don't know. Some things to work out. We'll have some meetings and we'll take care of those. That's awesome. So, not only did I get the microphone, but, you know, we got one of these. So, um, so yes, there's that. I, uh... Oh, that delights me so much. That delights me so much. I can't, I can't fucking believe I'm still seeing this thing. Um, where do you think... Do we know any of the history before Late Night where that microphone... I know everything, Mike. You know everything? <laughs> How far back does it go? What other shows has it been on? Well, it's not as old as you think. Okay. But it's more about who it's been used by. There's visual reference of... It, first of all, I know from the guy who went and got it. Do, do you know why this even exists? Does anybody know why this microphone even exists? Does anybody care? This is a Letterman thing. I'm sorry about that's HeCast. Okay. Can I p put a pin in HeCast? <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. That's what I'm like saying. So <laughs> the, the, the first year of the show, they had a different, an AKG, a little silver yeah. Johnny Carson style yes. microphone, but silver. Yes. And at some point, Steve Allen came to be a guest on the show. And they had Steve Allen do one of his old bits from when he used to host The Tonight Show or the, the Colgate Show, whatever his, whatever sh Westinghouse sure. show, whatever it was. Sure. But they would have him here. So they said, uh, the art department or whatever, oh, get, get, we need to get an old-fashioned microphone. So Glenn Arbor, who was an audio guy on Conan when I worked there, but he worked there all throughout Letterman. His dad worked there through The Tonight Show and Jack Parr and the whole thing. Lifer. Hmm. He went over across the hall to uh, what used to be The Tonight Show where these were still hanging in the rafters, these old RCA 77s were hanging in the rafters for audience uh, reaction mics, whatever, the audience mics, you know, when they're applauding and whatever and laughing. Right. So there were a handful of them. So they went and got one, and they used it on the Steve Allen bit from the show. And they ended up doing that a couple times when he came on. And then at some point, Dave then took that mic to use on the late night desk. Now that's... Over time, it changed. It got shorter pretty quickly. They eventually cut a hole in the desk yeah. for the wire. Then they cut a square in the desk. Then eventually they made another desk, the one that, you know, the NBC version of this desk, blah, 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 blah. So um, technically, it was a Jack Parr mic. Jesus Christ. No, I'm going to blow your mind when you hear the last one. <laughs> technically, it's a Steve Allen mic. We know it's a David Letterman mic. Yeah. Now, where was Carson's last appearance ever? <laughs> In California, <coughs> in, in California, when Dave took the show out west. Calvert DeFore, hey, Br Johnny, bring yeah. me the whatever, and it was Calvert yeah. DeFore, and then the real Johnny came out. Yeah. Standing ovation for Survivor. Absolutely. It was the L.A. version of this desk, not this desk itself, it the L.A. version of this desk, but this microphone. That's the last time it was used. Well, it was the last time, the, the last, jo yeah. Johnny Carson's Johnny last Carson's appearance. Fit, like, so, yeah. Parr, Allen, the, all visual references, Letterman, Carson. Holy crap. That's why Tony from Telefunken thinks it's the <laughs> most valuable ribbon microphone in the history of the world. <laughs> and he has uh, less uh, pulse. <laughs> so uh, it's not about monetary value no. to me. And you know oh, that. God, and no. I don't it's an think any, it, somebody would throw this old piece of junk away. Not yeah. me. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, so use the reference, the, the Ark of the Covenant. That's the broadcasting Ark of the Covenant right there. Well, if anything, it was the cup of a carpenter, and hmm. and it was when I decided to let it go and not fall into the pit with Elsa that the world decided to give me the desk and this show and you here now and you I was have talking chosen about wisely, my friend. The goal was to <laughs> turn it all around. This wasn't supposed to be about me, Mike. Here we are again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, brother. Here we go. I mean, so that's the story. So yeah. that's the story, and there's a lot more to it than just that. But you know, those are the. The truncated. I'm glad versions. we made it. I, oh, I'm so and happy it, to be here. I love this. The sound is undeniable, right? It, it's the two things, David Letterman. <laughs> <laughs>
this fellowship is undeniable. I'm so happy. Uh, I, I mean, it. I don't know what we've actually covered here. I'm really happy about the stuff that you guys are doing because it's yeah. super positive and it's important, I believe. And uh, any time someone is pushing vulnerability and what was the other one? Awareness. About authenticity. Awareness. Um, I feel that those are both great starting points. I feel it's things we should all work on every day. Mm-hmm. Agree. Um, I don't want to wrap it up this second, but I want to start thinking about wrapping it up. Sure. This picture's amazing. Let me see here. Um, how do people follow you? I know you're the Letterman Podcast. You're yeah. Sh- Shazam Mike. Shazam Mike. Mike. Shazam Mike on the, on the Instagram. But I don't do the Instagram very well, but I'm going to get better at it. I have to get better at it. Yeah. So I'm going to. You do. It's it's not even for young people anymore. It's old people are on Instagram. Everybody's on the Instagram. I mean, we're not on, we should be on TikTok and not TikTok. this and fucking all that. What's it called? TikTok. What'd I say? TikTok. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you, you take my point? Good. You take my point? Yeah. I can only handle Instagram. I'm going to go on the TikTok. <laughs> <coughs> Make some videos on the TikTok. Discord. We got to go on Discord. Get on Discord. <laughs> Discord. Yeah, I've been and and, and Discord. if you guys, if you got extra cash in your pocket, join my OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't check a wow, wow. Yeah. Who knows what we're gonna put up there this month? We take requests. He doesn't wear pants behind the desk. <laughs> I have pants on the desk. <laughs> Underpants um, Productions, babe. I'm <laughs> bummed that the smoke is. Uh, we need a new smoke machine. It's like mm, you'll see it come out. In a second. It's, it's very very sad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm pushing the button, but it's... It it. used to bellow. Oh, (laughs) bellow. Now Now she makes more with her little pen. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Let's see, you're going to go see Letterman in a couple days, and I want to know what you're going to manifest this time. Can we talk about it ahead of time, or is it like a birthday wish where you got to not say it before and tell afterwards? No, you told her about Luke Robitaille. I told everybody and their dog that I wanted to go uh, get my picture behind Letterman's desk and maybe something more, which is is what I said. yeah, the goal. He's he's. Uh, I'm again talk about how I can't. I, I didn't think I'd ever see Letterman live again, and he for the Netflix is a joke comedy festival is performing at the Fonda Theater, for four performances uh, between Friday and Saturday. We're going to the very last one, nine forty five Saturday night. The Music Box is a great venue. The uh, is that the, 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 Fonda, the Music Box? The, the Fonda, Fonda Theater yeah. Music Box. Yeah, it's on like Hollywood or whatever. Yeah, we're gonna be there super early um, because worst case scenario we're gonna be at the very front. It's a general admission show, so worst case scenario we're gonna be at the very very front. But hopefully, uh, did you say the, worst case scenario yeah. we'll be at the very very front? The front of the of the of the and I'll the, the worst case scenario is so the goal is I want to get that thing signed and I want to get it up in the in the studio and I want to have an interaction with the man again. And um, when I talk, <laughs> so so the worst case scenario is we'll be at the very front and I'm gonna have it and I'm just gonna be this guy. You know, like a, like I'm holding a, a, a sign for a limo. All right. Well, I can already t- All right. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think, yeah. Um, and what is that? That's you and me. What? Uh, you know, maybe. That's me oh, thinking. Oh, yeah, okay. That's me thinking. I okay? see. Because it's not me. just a Rolling Stone cover. It's like, no, this is a picture of you and me yeah. from the end of the show. Yeah. yeah, that does give you a little bit different. But uh, if so you hold I it up before the show, they're going to take it away from you. Not before the show. No, oh, I know. But I'm just saying, no. like, do one of those. You fucking hide that shit. And 100%. Out there. Okay. 100%. Because um, <laughs> they'll take it away from you. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't. They don't this is where. This, that's <laughs> the, this is. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And I'm just. Yeah, so I don't want a negative story. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not. It's not. Because. The worst, the, okay, the very worst case scenario is I see David Letterman live again. And I'm so happy I get to see David Letterman live again. That's so amazing. And in a, in a. Uh, it's weird how you work. He just builds these random, weird, <laughs> worst scenarios, which are well, like not that bad. Is that what the idea is? And you're great. like, so at the worst case, at least but, I have this. But. The worst case. This the, amazing thing is going to happen. That's right. <laughs> that's right. But this, that's me that's how using my mind. Head. <laughs> but but what I'm trying to lean into is the, what made that picture happen is the universe going no I got something hold my beer I got something better for yeah. you and and that that is uh, there there might be some elves in the background that are saying hey we're, we there's might no, pull you no, around none of these things are random like for me yeah. when I drove to, <laughs> this is what's not you are right you called him out on this before like he does so much work yeah. to make these things <laughs> randomly happen <laughs> but you, you're <laughs> <laughs> me driving down to the Ed Sullivan Theater that night was random work they made that I didn't think about that nothing no. that was <laughs> that was random you you know every step of the way yeah. what's gonna happen now sometimes you're still blown out of the water for yeah. sure Which but I you think, totally yeah. orchestrate like I have to constantly tell you like dude <laughs> <laughs> I know. First thing in raising is lighten up on that grip. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> just sort of, you know, guide it, yeah. guide it. Yeah. And uh, and maybe that's it. But you, it's it's the effort and the grind, perhaps, that yields those results. Before I was saying, my my logic is that any grind will yield a result. Totally, totally. But again, the magic doesn't come from the grind. The magic uh, comes as a result of the grind. I think. Yeah, and, and you attach yours with even grind and belief. Yeah. Like you're you're fifty Without fifty. Without a doubt. Without belief, the grind will only it's only monetary. Like, you get it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I yeah. get so heady, especially when somebody actually buys my shit. Oh, it's, oh my God, it's the, truth. it's the truth. I got a sucker here. Let me just keep going. He's all like. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I believe this stuff, but it's because it's right for me. I don't, yeah. it's not right for everybody. You know? Right. But it should be. How well, much that's better not, of a world would it be? No, that's not up to you. Not. That's not up to you or me or anybody else. In the green room, People. you got a light bulb idea. Like, I love, I love when I have a conversation with somebody and I literally see the bulb go on over their head. Mm. Oh, and you can see it in the eyes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The light, the light pops up and, it, whoa, the spark and the twinkle comes and I you're like, whoa. I can feel it. I can feel it when that happens. And it's one of the greatest feelings in the entire world because you see somebody is thinking a little bit bigger. They're empowered a little bit more. Uh, and, 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 and it gives hope and it gives all sorts of great things. And I just oh, love that feeling more than almost any other feeling. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Do you know what you're like? You're, are, you're, I, oh, Jesus Christ, I should probably check before I say something like <laughs> no, this. Just, it's, it's jazz. <laughs> you're like somebody who's bipolar, but only the good part. Like, unless you have these periods of such <laughs> dark depression, like you're only the manic. <laughs> Nice. You're able to somehow maintain <laughs> that crazy, <gasps> that place of like, oh man, I can get there for a few minutes here and there, but I either have to walk myself off the ledge or talk myself down, or I got to go relax and sleep it off, whatever. And somehow you're able to just kind of maintain that that incredible enthusiasm that kind of only comes from people who are in a not good place. I don't know, but like eighty percent <laughs> of the time, I like that. There's twenty of that's probably. That's a very healthy good. amount, sir. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Is that yeah, true? he. It, it's true. Like I guess, she sees like, the worst of me. She's my, the one my, sees the worst the, of me. If that's the yeah, FAQ, that's what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, like that's our dynamic, right? Like the FAQ of our marriage is: Is he always like that? <laughs> like people are always like, gets up this, like, no, no, I know he because, doesn't yeah. do that at home. I'm like, no, no. no like in three it. years, I was waiting for the other shoe. <laughs> Never dropped. Three years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have like three days where yeah. we we'll go, where we'll talk and, or yeah. interact or whatever. Yeah. And then I don't know. It's kind of like <laughs> my life can't actually sustain that. Like I yeah. don't. People don't have that kind of access to me. I can't. Well, our life is too kind of complicated. Hey. And uh, and I think he doesn't always realize that. So like we'll, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll have like 100%. a weekend, like totally <laughs> a Thursday show. We'll do this show. Yeah. I'll work till two in the morning tonight, right? On doing stuff, making dinner, whatever. Yeah. And then up at five thirty for Breakfast Club, whatever. And then that wears us out till two. And then we come back and we are zombies. Yeah. Med- yeah. Get her medicated the whole thing. Meanwhile, like <laughs> and this and that. From some conversation we had the night before that I thought like, oh great. I've got a week until we can whatever and then yeah. like he's already making moves yeah. on it because yeah. he's thought about it processed yeah. it already yeah <sighs> yeah I can't uh, I, I don't know how she I puts can't. up with it sometimes I think it's a superpower I'm not complaining no no I know but it's do you I'm trying to be I, like I think this is I wish I had what I'm talking about you well, having I wish I had that kind of energy but it's a lot like I wake up in the morning literally it's a brand new day oh yeah that was a Lot. Ten years. I still, I still do it, right? In a good way, but it was You're like the guy from Friends. Like, it's a beautiful morning. <laughs> it was like, the, like right after we got married. It's a brand new day. I'm like, yeah. I don't drink coffee. Honeymoon. That's awesome. Like a year later, it's a brand new day. I'm like, oh my god. And you don't drink coffee? I don't. No. I don't. Oh my god. What I do, it is very noticeable. Like, whoa. Like, yeah. It, it hits me. Like Hammy from Over the Hedge. There you go. Yeah. I don't know if you ever just, saw that. I this is I can't believe you would reference that movie. It's hilarious. I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> it's true. But they, well, everything just sort of the, the person I built the time machine with and the Ghostbusters yeah. covered all that stuff. They they worked on that movie and like oh half the God. voices in it are that. And oh half of the voices that aren't famous people. If you look, it's like the one credits, of my he's Sean Bishop. He's got a ton of voices in that movie, oh. and he did all the scratch for the whole thing. So oh, like hey. he recorded the other people with everybody. Oh he my did gosh. all the Shrek movies. It's so funny. Yeah, I like, always call him that. Like yeah. when Hammy takes the he takes the Red Bull and he's walking through and everything's floating. That's my Do you like those Dreamworks movies? I hate to switch gears. 
Of the two, I prefer the Pixar ones like significantly. Yeah, oh, yeah but I mean, I did love that movie. There was like something about that movie. So I, I didn't get that. It's because my youngest. Are, loved are, it. You'll meet Austin tomorrow. Oh, I can't um, wait. And, yeah, and he that was one of his favorite movies. Yeah. Oh well, then, okay. that's probably why. So, so there's that. But I do love no, Pixar. but the Pixar movies. Like we'll watch Soul with Alara, our granddaughter. And I mean, oh. we're due to watch that one again. That right? Is, uh, <laughs> oh so man! If you want to be so a better human, good. oh, charges so the batteries. Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're Pixar Pixar's too. pretty big. Yeah. So you guys are going back to Canada when? Monday morning. Monday. Monday morning. All right. We're doing car stuff tomorrow because some party, some people in your party who are not here today are big car people, right? Big Ozzy's, car people. A, Ozzy's a huge car guy. He's a videographer, <laughs> but he loves cars. Yeah. So. Is his name Ozzy? Austin, no, Austin. We, oh, calls oh, okay. him Ozzy. From birth, we called him Ozzy. <laughs> go, go, totally. Go him. <laughs> totally. <laughs> when he was, when we were here when, when he was like three, and I was like, Ozzy. And somebody in a surf shop, they're like, dude. Yeah. <laughs> the righteous name. Yeah. And I'm like, well, never mind. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's the best. Yeah. So we've called him Ozzy. Like, I mean, Ozzy or Ozzy. He's but he's, a, he's not just a car fan. He's, he makes car content too or he's, so, he's getting into it well he's a videographer um and uh talk about following your passion yeah we we positioned him as he was graduating high school that he would finish his uh his grade 12 year um as uh are we willing to wrap up soon i just want to make sure that we're uh, yeah we're over i we're, mean uh, yeah but, but i want it i don't want to yeah enough of your son <laughs> <laughs> i hear you but no, I no, it's trunk, good I hear, gonna... in the meantime let's uh, tiny on the radio question for both jay and mike what is the better show late night or late show Oh, this is great. I know. I love this. <laughs> That's why this I called my attention. Again, why we're just... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a matter of better. It's a matter of difference and then what your preference is. I mean, that's your answer. I say one is markedly better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a late show guy. I'm sitting at the late show desk. I would gladly trade it for the late night desk. Oh, God. Did I tell you? I have a... Yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> I got to tell you off the line. I have a lead on the, the other... LN85? The, yeah, the original... Yeah, the original late night. LN85. Yeah, LN85, you know. We've talked about it. <laughs> we'll see. Who knows? And the new chair should be here soon, too. So it's all a work in progress. And then this will probably become the road. The chair in the show. green room is similar to the chair you're getting, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I it'll love be, it. But it'll be Kathleen Anchors Blue and upholstered. Yeah, beautiful. Now back to the videographer son. Ozzy uh, knew – okay, so Fast and the Furious was his movies growing up. That's like our Back to the Future. Like he loved that stuff. So yeah. his grade 12 year, we put him in um, a position where he would finish his grade 12 year at our local uh, tech college – and he would have his first year auto tech under his belt, and they would even position him to be uh, as a um, an apprentice at a mechanic shop. Oh, awesome. so the shop that he got was a shop in Kelowna, um, where I'm from, called Classified Motorsports, and they're all the the right hand drive. That's all they do. They do dyno tuning. They do all sorts of stuff. So Ozzy leaves high school and basically Canada's gets left hand drive, isn't it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. So 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 all the import culture and so, oh, I see your point. So yeah, he, he, he literally cars, gets JDM his cars. Drive. Yes, hundred percent. Okay. And you guys can go so far down that rabbit hole. Um, I'm in finance, I'm a like uh, so so. Well, <laughs> but he's such a car guy, oh, and I mean they worked on all sorts of exotics. But there. I'm a Porsche guy. I'm you're, not a car guy. Oh, you're a Porsche guy. Fair yeah, that's enough. what I'm trying to. to Fair enough. There's, it's a difference. Like, do you I'll know talk what a GTS? But do you know, I don't know much about. Do you know cars, what a GTST like is? A what? A GTST? It's a type of. No, I don't. It's not a GTR. It's on a Nissan GTR. Can you get medication it's a Skyline. It's a, yeah. it's, a, it's a Toyota Skyline. I'm a few bars. I might know it. <laughs> it's a Skyline. So so that was Ozzy's first oh, car. Oh, well, a there's, Nissan Skyline. there's always Skylines up there. Okay. So so that was his first car as he's working wow. out of high school mm-hmm. for this shop. Dude. Does his second year uh, at, at the college and back to apprenticing. Does his third year. And then he's just looking at us going, this isn't my dream. And he didn't like them taken apart even though he can take them apart and he dropped his own engine and did all the stuff in our garage with his gtst um did he break it he started what's that did he break it no oh good no no he every making, bolt he out every bolt every in bolt half the things yeah. i drop i end up breaking he ended asking. up he ended up making a bunch of money on the car and everything but I'm he's sorry. like i like it <laughs> dad joke here he started, <laughs> drop everything uh he started making videos of the cars as they would come in and then suddenly he's up all hours of the night 
on YouTube teaching himself how to be a videographer and he's going to get in gear and he's doing some of these things. And now as guys are coming in, he's like, well, Hey, maybe, maybe I can help you with the marketing for classified motorsports and, 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 uh, start taking Making a car videos it. and mm -hmm. he's stuff. good. And he's, he's so really good. good. And then he, he struck out, as so a, he struck out on his own as a videographer after his first year, he stopped having to do weddings. He does uh, mm -hmm. all sorts of business brand story videos and things, but his, one of his favorite things. He sounds is, like series one films and, and, he, and very much and yeah. four films. And very no. much so yeah. uh he's right along that along that alley and awesome. uh I, I sent you i don't know if you got a chance to watch it i, I did a video it was the, a the one of him rapping. Bra or rap or something yeah it, that was a, a marketing video he did for a company that does raps locally for for cologne and they're rapping a mclaren and that's awesome and and so anyways he's very gifted um and passionate about cars yeah and he's going to combine that tomorrow he's going to have his mind fucking blown oh, i hope so I by, hope so. by what we see and uh, we're very excited about that, that he's mm -hmm. I, I can't and, guarantee what you'll see because it could be nothing i mean they li you literally never know and um but and the feeling it, though it gen yeah it generally doesn't disappoint but i, I mean i just you generally you genuinely don't know what will yeah. show up i'm so. excited about i hope i hope he's not disappointed we rented a convertible <laughs> mustang for the drive oh just to have <laughs> <laughs> i know right <laughs> It was the best that we could do on short notice. I know, but like, why not a Sentra? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't think they make a drop top Sentra. Oh, they? you want a convertible? Yeah, if we're gonna make the drive up there and all I that. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> You've never spring been. You is, don't know what to expect. I get it. I get it. Spring is just springing <laughs> where we live. Are we gonna get laughed at? No, not at all. No, no. That's a, that's no you're gonna love every minute of it. The view is amazing. I just, I, I just, uh, I just, uh, it's a, uh, yeah. Have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna. What time are you? Uh, <laughs> what Give color a, is it? What color is it? Uh, silver. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, car rental. Car rental color. It's not a judgment on the car. No. I swear to God, it's not. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like it. it I seems can't like wait it. to. Uh, by the way, that 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 all the artifacts and everything. I can't wait to see yellow car. I can't wait. Oh, to, it's in the know, garage. I know. Well, I know. He's, that, I'm excited about that too. All right. I'm excited. Yellow car's a little celebrity too. Yeah. Turned into a celebrity. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I like that. Uh oh man, it, it, it hit a lull there real quick. I didn't really was expecting anything. Um, <laughs> oh, late night versus late show. Should we? Yeah, no, we. I think we did it. You want to talk it? about why? Uh, yeah. We have our reasons. Yeah, we have our reasons. I like Powerful Dave. That's that's why. That's yep. why I like. That's why I like late show because I, I like Powerful Dave. I liked when they were all experimenting, exploring the space, figuring out what the show would be. There were a lot of constraints. Oh, it can't be this. It can't be that. We don't have this. We don't have that. Yeah. No budget. It wasn't going to be picked up very long. All the stuff Mark Carson was talking about the other yeah. day. All of that stuff. We were figuring it out. We were young. Blah blah blah. They didn't intend to create the thing that they made. They yeah. intended to create something, and they probably thought it would be better in other ways. Hmm. But they, I don't think, had any idea. No. We talked about Bob Gale and Back to the Future on that Steve Mazon podcast today. Like, those guys had no idea. Yeah. They were just trying to make this movie they've been trying to make for a long time. Oh yeah. They had no idea it would be hmm. a thing that is now influencing multiple generations, which is a hard thing to do. Yep. For anybody, let alone a film or music or you know, artistic mm -hmm, medium, mm -hmm. whatever. Couldn't I'm have going better. on and on and on. Uh, no, and I love all those. <laughs> I wish somebody would have. I love and appreciate all those things too, um, very, very much so. Uh, the fruit of that labor was the Late Show, and Dave's position in broadcasting history. Was you like the most labor. powerful man. I'm Dave Letterman, the most powerful man on American broadcasting, oh, and then it became a thing. And no, your cuts of meat. No, 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 no. <laughs> I love no. that stuff too. I, I do love that stuff too. I, I just I love Dave. Being more over in the professional re professional wrestling business, they talk about being over. A guy like Hulk Hogan or The Rock is over with the crowd, with the audience. They can kind of do no wrong, and they're bigger oh. than whoever it is across from them. I liked when Dave sitting behind that desk was always bigger than the person sitting in this chair. Yeah, that was always that way for me. Yeah, well, they're okay. Fair, fair. No, point. I mean I feel if you like watch the original, it yeah. always was. And when he went to the big theater, it became about different things, and then all that got washed away. So I'm with you. He was, to me, better on late night. More yeah. real. And I understand. I 100% understand that, that mm -hmm. point of view for sure. And it's not him or any blame. It's just a nature of how mm -hmm. of the... How the beast. The, yes. Yeah. It, the growth. It's really just growth. Mm -hmm. It became a business. It mm -hmm. became a real show, too. It was always the anti-show on NBC. Mm -hmm. Yes. This was the th It didn't have a logo. It didn't have a... It was all this... We're in this big broadcasting behemoth antenna to the world, but, like, we don't belong here. We're the kids who shouldn't have a show. Yeah. Um, even though we celebrate everything there is to be about having a show. All the irony, Sounds the familiar. layers of irony, <laughs> layers of irony in that, in that, uh, what you just said and, and more, I, I adore that about yeah. late night. It's, and it was just so experimental. I think if you had ever actually set foot in that room and felt the energy, well, I, this is the closest thing 
that, oh, that we can do in yeah. this tiny little space. It was just electric. So uh, that's what it is for me. The theater, fine, but it was a different intention and it was a different result. It was. Uh, that being said, he got used to it. I, I um, <laughs> They just uh, recently put up on the, on the Letterman uh, YouTube channel, they put up uh, Conan O'Brien's last uh, appearance. And Hang on. At the, Didn't you request it? Was that the one you requested, or was that Norm Macdonald? No, I, I requested Norm Macdonald. Oh, okay. The Conan one is one of the best of all time because it's it's him talking about the Leno. Yes, without a doubt, the golden age of television. Um, yeah, but that's uh, the best. It, oh, you're referring to my time <laughs> losing the Tonight Show as the golden age of television. That's yes. great. <laughs> right. I just liked in the beginning when they're sitting there silently, and uh, sorry, Dave's microphone buzzes. Uh, they're sitting there <laughs> silently as Conan first sits down. And um, and and they're kind of just trading in who's going to speak first, who's going to speak first, and yep. uh, and Conan goes, or maybe uh, I think it was Dave. He goes, I think the longer we sit here silently, the more uncomfortable it will make Jay. And, then and Conan's, Conan's response is, Conan's response is, you know Jay's watching, right? You know Jay's watching, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know he was. Awesome. He's in a feed somewhere, in a tra- satellite, in a truck, satellite yeah. truck watching. <laughs> yeah. Um, but at the end of that, I think it was the end of that interview. Um, Conan talked about the theater and Dave just proclaimed, I love being in this theater. And, and I understand that because the energy inside that theater, it's different than this energy. Like you said, like the, the, the small tight, like, Oh, look what we can do. The little show that could, but (laughs) it's beautiful and fun and all that versus the grandiose. And that might be an age thing too. Like mm. I, I, I like the idea that as he kind of grew, like now he's doing long form, and and boy, the uh, the the lineup for the next season, May twentieth of my next guest, I'm very excited about every single one of those guests as well. <laughs> you don't say, Mike. yeah, really, you, v- yeah, something you know. new with Letterman, and you're right. you're a fan of it, exactly, <laughs> you excited? unabashingly. I'm a Lewis with, Hamilton with zero fan. judgment. I'm a Lewis Hamilton fan because oh, is that he... who that was? I thought that was for the show. <laughs> No. I thought it was for the show, Hamilton. Well, you said I wore this shirt because I know you don't like it. You're I not go, a That's fan hilarious. Of, we were talking about Lin-Manuel not... Man- Miranda last okay, night. Okay, so. You're not a fan of either, You're Hamilton? not a fan of either. No, I like I like Lewis Hamilton. Yes. I, t- I say I can't. It doesn't matter. Don't ask about it. You, okay, you okay. talk. You talk. <laughs> no, no. Me. Are you kidding? I fucking love this so much. Um, <laughs> and have me on your show again, but I want to hear oh, about yeah, you. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for that. can't wait to have you on the Letterman podcast. Um <clears throat> Uh, and or he cast for that matter. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, I just think that as he's aged, like now he's doing long form with some cool little videos in the middle. Like he's reinvented himself so many times. <laughs> I feel like you're late to the game. We had this conversation the other day. We go, the Dave we're watching on YouTube now is old late night Dave. This is old early NBC Dave. Yes, exactly. This is somebody who doesn't have all of those constraints. This is somebody who's like, wait, what? We can do anything? Mm-hmm. They gave us a shit. We can just do whatever and put it out there? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm seeing. Man, it's the the, the stuff with him and Mary, oh. the inside jokes about him and Barbara. Barbara never worked on The View. The other guy went to The View. <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious, though, because another producer from the show did go work on The View. And Brian Tetta, and who's e- going to be a guest on our show, by the way. There you go. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. EP is the friggin' View. Um, I, I think what's going on now is much more. It's it's some it's of the better stuff I've seen from Letterman in a long time. It's fantastic. It's such a good time to be a David Letterman fan. And he's 75 fucking years old. Is that what he just turned? 75? Yeah. And That's you amazing. think about like he's you think about what Carson Still 72 in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> And how, like, the last appearance, you know, California uh, was supposed to read the top ten list, didn't, couldn't do it, choked up a little bit. Okay, no, no. Handed the supposedly card it was his left. voice because he was supposedly already sick. And then supposedly yeah. the audience was so roaring about it, he said uh, he just, didn't even do it. Right. Like they were going to do the Karnak hat or something and they just. They just couldn't. Uh, yeah. Why? No material could top what that. That was a guy who knew yeah. what was up. 100%. Even at the end. 100%. But it didn't have to be the end, and Dave shows that. Al Franken said, uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> By the way, I think he died 10 years later, so it wasn't like the end, but it was the last <laughs> pr- public appearance. But it wasn't... That's what I'm saying, though. Like, he could have done so much cool little cameo stuff or whatever he could have done. There wasn't YouTube back then, whatever. But Dave went the other way. Franken said... <laughs> Are uh, you a student of Carson at all? A little bit. <laughs> okay. A little bit. I mean... I mean... Uh, anything could happen. Anything, yeah. None of the things you just described were in that man's personality. No. <laughs> No, that's true. Um, Carson's musings. But the idea... Well, Carson's daily blog. When, P, when, when Peter Lasalle, Carson goes to the beach. 
but he still was faxing jokes to Dave. And, and oh, you can't turn the mind off. I that's see your point. right. And and you know, performing for Peter Lasalle, going and doing monologues, calling up Peter Lasalle on the telephone, uh, doing little monologues for him based on whatever he saw in the newspaper. Yeah, you, you know, can't turn it off. You can't turn it off. If YouTube was around then, would he have figured something out where he would have done something like that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. My opinion is no. Maybe not. But, but maybe. I'm glad Dave is. I, yeah. I'm so I'm so glad. Fra Franken said you're going to turn into a, a, an eccentric recluse. Um, yeah. and, and he didn't. And then it turned out it went the other way around. <laughs> it took a few years, but thank God. Uh, no, really... I mean, that's where Franken is. Well, that's a fair, fair point. <laughs> fair point. I, didn't, I can't believe I stepped on that. Zoom yeah, out, bro. That's what it's, yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right, we've gone way long. We've we gone way do this long. forever. I love you both. Thank love you for so being here. I'm love. sorry we didn't really pitch anything. This has been, this is, I told you, it's that. been a day. I'm, Go amazed, to I'm amazed we got any of this done. Uh, yeah, he changed it.com, and then, um, Sorry. Is there anything going on here? <laughs> I think the uh, the Instagram audience kind of you know, they tapped out. We didn't pay that much attention to them, so and you weren't there to keep it going and reference our. I will stuff, be next so. week. I'll be back, producer Mike, which I'm delighted to be. So the Letterman podcast. He changed it. She she changed, changed me. it. Changed yeah, me. In the book, she, she changed, changed me. me. He changed it. You guys Everybody's are as changing. all over the place all as we things. are with uh, with your branding. We all need help with our branding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, the book and and the the book and and the app are totally different. They are. They are. But the names are so similar, and they're so. Yeah, yeah. it's the only right. yeah it kind of ties into the whole difference between men and women thing because. Oh, the, don't stop, don't open. Don't, 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 I mean, I can't <laughs> even believe that I would say I'm wrapping up a can't, a podcast, and she goes, "Well, the differences between men and women." <laughs> Let me just let me just do five seconds on the differences between men and women. I have a feeling this may go on. Why don't you come back? <laughs> Done. Oh, cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> cannot wait. So Did you watch love. The Price is Right when you were a kid? Of course. The, it's a Funko oh, yeah. chip I saw you just look at back yeah. there. That's a oh, Funko yeah. chip. Uh, all right, so follow them on all the stuff. Uh, and also, you're going to be up at Breakfast Club tomorrow. I'm so excited about Breakfast Club. If you see a silver Mustang... <laughs> Be don't run it off be the nice. road. Be nice. Be, just nice. be nice. They're Canadian. They're very, they very friendly. <laughs> Use the turnouts. People will come up behind you. For the most part, our group is incredibly friendly and respectful. Um, uh, but, you know, use the turnouts. Okay. And, you know, there's no address. Did you look up? Did you figure out how to get there? There's no cell service. No, you got to do it all at the I bottom. I was going to ask about that after the You have to plan it all out ahead. This is, wow. this is a responsible adult activity. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We're not going to die, are we? I can't guarantee somebody <laughs> dies every week. Somebody dies on that road every week. It's the deadliest crest. Where are we going? Well, you keep it, keep it. That's my point. Keep it in check. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's usually motorcycles. Okay. <laughs> but seriously, cars okay. go flying off at every, like almost every day. Okay. You have to be crazy careful. Respect the crest. Got it. Uh, on and on and on. Longest show ever. Almost. <laughs> uh, Saturday, I think we might be at Beverly Glen. Next week, we're back with Emmy Hall and Phil Morris. Uh, funny thing, we talked about Phil Morris on Tuesday. He was uh, Jackie Childs from uh, Seinfeld. You know, who told you to put the bomb on? I told you to put the bomb on. Um, and so many other things. He's a very talented actor and voiceover guy and everything. But uh, as we were wrapping it up and the theme song was playing and everything, we were done. Mark Carson was here. He goes, I went to high school with him. I was oh. like, what? He goes, I went to high school with Phil Morris. I was like, you're kidding me. He's like, yeah. I'm like, what a small world. What a small world. All right. So that's it's what's going connected. on. It's all connected. I love you. We love you guys. Right we love you. you. Right back at you. We all love you guys at home. Please love one another. Um, mm. That's it. We'll see you all at Breakfast Club tomorrow or out there someplace. But seriously, we love you. So much love. Yeah. Thank I feel you. like there's more, but next time. Love you. <laughs>